Good evening. How are you guys? Welcome to the somber night at Environmental Coffee House. Uh, we'll see who joins. I want to share. Hi, Mark, and hi, Phil. I shared it. I just like to share a little on Facebook. I am my own uh, marketing <laughs> crew. I am my own, um, well, everything. <laughs> it's what I do. So I see that it's live in Facebook, which is really cool. This whole multi-streaming thing is great. I just can't, it's it's really hard to believe that after I remember back doing this a while back, you know, um, with real progressives. I didn't even know what a live stream was. I'm trying to share this. I'm not like really doing a very good job of doing this, but <clears throat> I just want to share to a couple of the groups. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kim. Hi, Rick. Hey, Oz is here. Very cool. All right. Well, the gang's all here, and <clears throat> I won't be so rude and sit here and just do all this sharing for too long. <laughs> There's only a few groups that I like to share to, and it's it's cool on Facebook. And then I changed to um, YouTube. My little control center here is very rudimentary, but I did get a microphone coming, so I don't have to wear these. I have a plug-in uh, mic that's coming, a USB mic, so I'm kind of excited about that, and we'll see how that works out for audio. Um, well, let me get started, and I'll tell you what, what, what happened tonight was, well, I... Uh, <clears throat> I had a whole researched a lot of work. And hi, Kim. Good. I had a lot of research work on a, on a topic I want to do. And I will do it. But I'm not prepared. And if I'm not prepared, I can't do the kind of presentation I'd really like to do. And this will be about a controversial figure that has come out named Michael Schellenberger. <coughs> Excuse me. But I, I'm not going to do that tonight. Tonight, instead, I would thought, uh, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to do a little reading from my all-time new favorite series from Dark Mountain. Only this time I'm not going to read, I'm not going to read from the book. I'm going to read right from the article and uh, I hope you like it because well, it's a it's a kind of a, 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 a sentimental piece, you know. It's kind of sentimental in if you're a parent, you will understand, maybe you'll understand why I chose this. The gal's name <clears throat> gosh, don't worry. The gal's name is Jennifer Case, and she's got many essays she writes for Orion. And she's in the Dark Mountain series. And I read this a while back when I first got the book. And I knew I wanted to use it, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to be quiet because we're going to go right on to this and, and get started. And I see a lot of you are here, so it's really great. And No Name made my show. Yes, you actually made the show. Okay. I don't know what color. Oh, I don't think the colors are going to come up tonight because I made them black. I'll have to fiddle with that <clears throat> at intermission. I'm trying something out, and I want to know if you can hear this as I read. All right, I'm going to start reading. Tell me if you can hear this audio, because I'm kind of playing with it. <clears throat> Animals on the eve of extinction. It's kind of sad. Bittersweet. Jennifer Case. Okay. And so here we go. Once upon a time, and please tell me if you hear the music so I can see it on the comments. Once upon a time, I read my daughter a bedtime story in which dinosaurs and humans coexisted, living together sustainably in cities as well as on farms. They grew crops together, they raised young together, and they made decisions together. They ate only what they needed and carried no weapons. 
When they greeted each other and said their goodbyes, they used the phrase, breathe deep, seek peace. For a month each evening, follow our reading, my daughter nestled into her pillow, along with 16 plastic dinosaurs <clears throat> and one plush brachiosaurus and asked, if, if, if what happened to the dinosaurs and what happened to us? Will it happen to us? Will, it, will we go extinct? For a month each evening, I paused and I said, well, maybe, eventually, but you don't need to worry about that. I kissed her on the forehead and I told her good night, but when I left the room, I was still thinking about dinosaurs. I was a mother grazing with my children in a wide open pasture, and when I suddenly looked up, I saw the meteors. I saw the meteors fall. Emperor penguin, ringed seal, arctic fox, beluga whale, orange clownfish, koala bear, leatherback turtle, flamingo, wolverine, muskox, polar bear, hawaiian honeycreeper, bared sandpaper, piper, ivory gull, western glacier stonefly, tufted puffin, In my mid-twenties, I began to desire a child. And so I had a child. She was born in a hospital in the middle of December, and she is beautiful. And every day, even with her, when her burgeoning stubbornness forces me to count to ten in my head, her beauty astonishes me. The sharp cut of her jaw, the spark in her eyes. She has a zoo of imaginary pets, and she's starting to ask questions about death. And she tells me before bed that she thinks we should all, my husband, me, her, and her baby brother, die together at the same time so that we won't be alone. In those moments when her face opens asking for something I cannot give, a fear the size of her pupils sears into my chest that the pain she will experience in her future will not be the pain of a life, of a first love, of a love lost, of grief for dying relatives, but a grief so much larger. Lost worlds, lost lands, lost species, lost nations. As Earth destabilizes, as the climate destabilizes, what will her culture become? What will life become when we are focused so much on adapting, on reacting to the next thing, on wars over resources? What room will there be for joy? Sinai baton blue, placate rock snail, Mekong giant fish, Philippine crocodile, resplendent shrub frog, Yavin rhinoceros, pygmy hog, Variegated spider monkey, Hainan gibbon, Osgood's Ethiopian toad, Toyama's ground gecko, marbled gecko. Those, of course, are anxious thoughts. They are the thoughts of someone occasionally on the brink of despair. The thoughts of a mother a parent, late at night, someone trying to wrest control over an uncontrollable future. And surely, I think, my fears are no different than anyone's when the world tips towards instability. During the Vietnam War, didn't parents fear for their sons? In Europe and Asia, on the eve of World War II, didn't families fear for their children? In Sudan and El Salvador now, doesn't the bringing of life into the world carry with it a risk that surpasses the risks of childbirth itself? Only in this case, the threat isn't nations or even continents. It covers the planet. Magdalena River Turtle, Titicaca Water Frog, Benet Grasshopper, Plowshare Tortoise, Mongoose Lemur, Golden Bamboo Lemur, Adriatic Sturgeon, Records Rock Iguana, 
the great palau tree, snail, black-breasted puffleg, Glaucious macaw, Gasselton's flightless katydid, Parnassos Greek bush cricket, northern mass frog. Sometimes, out of necessity, I want to turn it all off. I want to wake up, bring my children to their respective daycares, teach my students how to write, pick up my children, boil water for pasta, and toss a green salad, eat at the table play evening games, and, and then go on a walk. Tuck them in with a bedtime story and a sippy cup of water. I want those small routines, the comfort of them, to be everything. I want to not have to think about anything else. Not what will the world look like in 30, 40, 50 years. Not to know that by then, 50% on of the species of Earth that's on Earth right now will be lost. White-headed vulture, hooded vulture, slender-billed curlew, California condor, rapa fruit dove, sociable lipwing, blue-eyed ground dove, lesser Antillean iguana, Okinawa woodpecker, Tapanuli orangutan, eastern gorilla, and the Himalayan quail. In my son's first year, the U.S. government tried to repeal the Endangered Species Act, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the White, uh, you know, the, the White House reduced Bears Ears National Monument by 85%. They changed the image on the Bureau of Labor Relations website from a family hiking to a wall of coal. They filled the cabinet with corporations. They slashed the budget of the EPA. On the day of the election when I was nine months pregnant with my son, I, I drove to work in Arkansas, the Lawn of Peace Lutheran Church, next to a designated polling place, and it was slathered with Trump signs. Transylvania Plump Grasshopper. Canterbury Nobbled Weevil, Three Forks Spring Now, Bamboo Lemur, Black and White Ruffled Lemur, Livingston's Flying Fox, Coral Pink Sand Dunes Tiger Beetle, McCord's Box Turtle, Painted Terrapin, and the Hooded Grebe or Greeby? In downtown Little Rock, my daughter runs across the benches of the Central Arkansas Nature Center, her fingers tracing the long line of aquariums. Look, that one has teeth, she says of the albino gar, and her joy is great. Watching her watch the fish, I can't help but imagine the roles reversed. Some alien creature is watching us, teeming, frothing force of humans, specimens in a vast glass world, and we are coupling, reproducing, eating, desecrating, taking from the soil, taking over resources like termites, only worse, or maybe just like termites only with more tools. Some of us have a God and believe we will be saved. Some of us do not, and it really doesn't matter, but I'm just one of them. One specimen who birthed two more specimens, and from above, I move through the routines of my life, and the aliens know what is coming, know the brink my species is bringing itself to, will watch the impending environmental apocalypse, which will not be the end of all life. The earth will remain but will certainly be the end of a great deal of life and perhaps the end of even our own. Iberian gray bush cricket, Hawaiian crow, long-billed forest wobbler, red-fronted macaw, the new Caledonian loric lorikeet, the yellow-breasted bunting orange-bellied parrot. Hi, Uphill Media. <laughs> Sorry, I just... Messed up my whole transition here. The uh, celibus, celibus, crested macaw, the bleeding toad. La Gormara, giant lizard. The La Gormara, giant lizard. And the Cuban crocodile. 
These are probably animal names that nobody talks about anymore. Only geeky nerds and scientists. And us. Yesterday, it stormed. The sirens went off at 1 p.m. I was at work. My children both at school. I imagined my son's daycare teacher rolling all their small cribs against the safest wall in the infant room. I imagined my daughter's preschool, the teachers guiding the students to all make tents with their hands beneath their tables. Then the rain poured down, horizontal. The sky turned green and black, and, and I ached for my children. That evening, after safely picking my children up, my daughter insisted on a rain walk. She put on her red rain boots and pulled out her children's umbrella. She hopped from foot to foot while I zipped my sweatshirt. Once outside, I lifted my face to the hazy gray sky and the wind puffed us with its humid breath and my daughter slashed through the gutters, the curbs, kicking and skipping through the puddles, pointing with delight whenever she saw an even bigger puddle ahead. The neighbor smiled at her and waved. Her pleasure in puddles, a simple delight for us all, and we slowly made our way halfway around the block. But then the wind picked up and the sky began to spritz a colder, stinging rain. My daughter's eyes, they widened. When a gust caught her umbrella, it pulled her 40-pound body backwards. Let's go back inside quick. The wind will take us away, she said. Nothing I could say would ensure that she was safe. The Iberian Gray Bush Cricket. Hawaiian crow, long-billed forest wobbler, red-fronted macaw, New Caledonian lorikeet, yellow-breasted bunting, orange-bellied parrot. I already read these guys, didn't I? Did I just screw this up? Oh, here we go. See, you know, can't go through one thing without messing it up. Now we go to this red-throated lorikeets. So we've lost two kinds of lorikeets as I, as if I, hmm, a lot of animals. Kakapo, Bornean orangutan, the giant IBIS, what's that, Ibis, Ibis, Siberian crane, they must have been amazing, Jaipur ground gecko, Indo Indo-Chinese box turtle, butterfly split fin, yellow spotted tree frog, tenor Tenerife speckled lizard and the red belly toad, Vancouver Island marmot, and the Nassau grouper. I began to plant a native prairie in our backyard. I bring my children to a native plant nursery where we pick up tick seeds, switch grass, and big blue stem. I sign us up for a um, CSA, which is Community Supported Agriculture, brainstorm ways to minimize our use of cars. On weekends, we go to local parks where my daughter gazes at tadpoles and my son digs his hands in the sand. You can probably hear that. I probably should mute it, right? Uh, what will life become? When we are focused so much on adapting, on reacting to the next thing, on wars over resources, what room will there be for joy? All the while, I'm aware that parents have a psychological need to believe they can keep their children safe and that climate change threatens that illusion. I'm aware that the greatest reduction to a family's carbon footprint is to have fewer children. I'm unaware that I decided no, she's aware that she decided to have one child, but unintentionally had a second. And I'm aware that there are no guarantees for my children. The Philippine Eagle, the New Caledonian Owlet, Nightjar, Galapagos, Petrel, True Weevil. Gosh, I remember talking about True Weevils. Hmm. Great Indian Bustard. Yellow gold flake, peacock tarantula, devil's hole pupfish, Myanmar snub nosed monkey, black crested gibbon, Polynesian tree snail, and the stellet sturgeon. In the late days of my pregnancy and early days of my son's life, I sometimes could not watch the news. I couldn't bear to see what was happening, or rather, what was happening had the power to make me lose hope. 
to stare at his small body, his belly button still weeping because the bit of tissue from the umbilical cord had not fully died and feel so fully that our country was headed in the wrong direction. What was I to do? I nursed my infant. I ate bowls of, full of fruit. I took baths and herbs. I let my body heal. I, I laid down in the afternoon when others went around to watch my son. I went on walks outside. I carried him to the porch. I watched him squint in the sun. I opened the shades of our home. I snapped the edges of his cloth diapers and I pressed my forehead against the cool window of the door at night when we were both awake in need of something to drink. Spengler's Freshwater Mussel. Don't be afraid to tell me if you've heard of these. White-tipped grasshopper. Southern even-fingered gecko. Rose's Mountain Toadlet. Red-crested tree rat. Riverine Rabbit. Sibiliani Mountain Grasshopper. Okay, Copy Cooney, I heard you. Um, green Sawfish, Red Wolf. It is despair. It is hope. It is a long O. Oh. It is an O. Oh. It is a prayer, a praising. Sometimes a pleading, sometimes nothing at all, but my steps moving forward, one day at a time, one waking at a time, one night at a time, life right now with small children, when climate change looms large and our country is not doing enough about it, is my hands open, asking, my hands on tree trunks, on babies' bodies, on grass, on laundry, on the washcloth as I wash bottles, on the valves of my breast pump, on student papers, on this keyboard now, my hands reaching out, saying, sorry, and please, saying, can't we be tender? compassionate. Can't we break through something with our elbows? Can't we heave our bodies against what is stopping us from changing our mindsets, our ideologies? Can't we get past these simple comforts? Can't we give up something so that they in the future will have something too? I know what fear is and I know how hard it is to think about changing our lives and I know we all feel small sometimes and inconsequential, but maybe we are. But we are here. We are bodies. We are all bodies on this earth. Northern Harry knows it. Oh, Northern Harry. That must be all by itself. I will take her off. I can't do that right now, I don't think. Okay, wait, I did. All right. Sorry. Northern Harry knows bat. Boy, I'm good. I could do that in one keystroke. Okay, the nosed wombat, the striped gecko. The European eel, the ornate ground snake, the Greek red damsel, spring pygmy sunfish, southern bluefin tuna, giant carp, Peruvian yellow tailed woolly, yet yeah, Peruvian yellow, sorry, the tailed woolly monkey. Now we've heard of the tailed woolly monkey. Back train camel, sapphire bellied hummingbird. So a sapphire bellied hummingbird and the adax. And she does this all for a reason. On a vast plain near the end of the crustaceous period, a mother Karas okay. Oh, ceratopsian grazes. I probably just wrecked that word. Ceratopsian grazes with her child, lowering her frilled and horned head to the ferns and, and cycads. The volcanoes have already been rumbling, spewing, spewing CO2 in the air. The wind makes the grasses firm and whistles through her spines. She tenses alert, plucking thin leaves with her beak. What is it she's thinking? When she suddenly looks up, she sees the meteors fall. I lean my head against her flank and feel kinship. <sighs> Blonde capuchin, cave ground beetle, Vietnamese pond turtle, Espanola, giant tortoise, giant mountain lobella, Sierra Nevada blue, the greater Virgin Islands skink, white lemuroid ringtail possum, 
staghorn coral, Shenandoah salamander, whooping crane, black-footed albatross, Bicknell's thrush, American pika, hawksbill sea turtle, rusty patched bumblebee, monarch butterfly, sockeye salmon, red crowned turtle. A species goes extinct. A civilization ends. Both are the uncomfortable, if constant, nature of life. And although I know I need to accept this, that, that everything dies and humankind will eventually too, the part of me that holds my children still needs to carve hope in the future. Hope in sacredness and responsibility and ecological kinship. Hope in bodies and community and connectedness and land. The Brazilian merganser, the sun-striped shrimp, the Caddo chimney grayfish, the Appalachian elk toe, a daily penguin, corpulent horse snail, Atlantic rubber frog, black soft-shell turtle, the hooded vulture, slender-billed curlew, common skate, skimitar-horned oryx, African wild ass, Saharan killifish, Atlantic humpback dolphin, and the dam gazelle. In the backyard, cantaloupes sprout from our compost, and I let them sprawl across the lawn. I breathe in air made of atoms that have circulated for eons, atoms also inhaled by the crustaceans and the brachiopods. I lower my head to the sweaty scalps of my children, each of us animals on the edge of extinction, each of us alive to our what we are becoming. I thought that was really, really good and moving for those of us with children and 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 perhaps grandchildren. I don't have grandchildren, but I um I have a daughter and you know it it's it's tough when you think about these things that are happening. And I know there's a lot of you out there with grandchildren. Um, I don't know what happened to Cop, Copy Cooney. I think he's here. Okay, I took you off. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. This was pretty cool. I'm going to show you some pictures before we go. And I am glad you're, you, you're all here tonight you know trying to make sure these times work out and uh, I don't know I want to show you some pictures and thank you David David said it was powerful well let's just look at a couple of pictures before we go of these animals and this was from uh, the um, popular mechanics believe it or not and they have some good articles I'm not going to go through everything I just want to look at the pictures the Brazilian speaks macaque, and the just the animals that were here and aren't. But this one, they said it was in zoos. But this article is from, I think this are. Oh, I'm way done down. It was from. All right, well, last year or a little over a year ago, right? We are in the sixth extinction, and don't let anybody tell you we're not. So. The, the Pinta Island tortoise, just all over the world. Brazilian sphinx, macaw, the scimitar oryx, oryx, North Africa. They had a tough go of it when Sahara's northern areas rapidly desertified. And, you know, really, the, it's basically what it all is with the animals is the habitat loss. It's not just climate change, it's habitat loss. We're, we're destroying the world, the planet. This guy was a, a Socorro isopod, ancient primi primitive crustacean. No. The saddest case, they were wiped. Oh, they were wiped off the face of the earth, clinging on for dear life in a single pool. Wow. Huh. They were swept into a two concrete pools and a water pipe where they held on until 1988 where the tree root cut off the water supply. Done. Salt Creek tiger beetle. 
Little things, but these all little things mean something. They all mean something. Tiger beetles. Yeah, we think of beetles as pain in the ass, but they're some they're a, they're a species. Look at this beautiful leopard. The Amur leopard in Russia and in China barely holding on. Barely holding on. So that's why, I guess, you know, we look at all these things. We have to remind ourselves that we have to be grateful for what we've got left for us and try and think of our children and our grandchildren in a way without freaking out. So the black rhino, we all remember the black rhino. We, we grew up with black rhinos on television and in movies and in zoos. And I remember in 2011 when the black rhino went extinct, I cried my eyes out. And all I ever did was see them in the zoo. The San Francisco Zoo. And I remember. Another rhino. The big animals. The elephants next. Oh, I know, I'm so depressing. Well, the, the, this one is virtually gone. So, I mean, they're counting, they're just counting by how many are left. Count on your fingers. Here's another rhino, the Javan rhino in Indonesia. Mm -mm -mm. Vietnam War. Can you imagine? Remember the Vietnam War, those of you that are old enough? Boy, did that ruin that ecosystem in, that, in, in those countries. Oh, my God. Sumatran rhino. A lot of rhinoceroses. And they were like, I think when I was a kid, I think rhinoceroses were like you know, what the favorite animals, elephants and rhinoceroses, the Tapanuli, Tapanuli, Tapanuli orangutan. The orangutan is going. I'm not even going to read it because I'm not going to get tears in my eyes. Cross River Gorilla. We took this from them because we have to have palm oil farms at plantations and we have to have a, a, a horrible Western diet that uses all this stuff that, that, uh, is, so bad for us anyway. The Western chimpanzee. Wow. Western chimpanzee. Closest to the brink. Few thousand individuals. And again, habitat encroachment, poaching, hunting, disease. Malayan tiger. Malaysia. Malaysia. 200 to 350 Malayan tigers. That's it. That's it. These guys, because of people. You know, when Naomi Klein says it's it's in her most recent book, it's capitalism, it's not humans that is having this happen, is is responsible for all this. It's it isn't just capitalism. Human beings, no matter what system they're in always encroach on the natural habitat and i really do like her and her writing but humans do it so no matter what capitalism communism socialism whatever ism it is human beings are are taking over the habitat and destroying it everywhere what can we do about it <laughs> i don't know you know, we talk about solutions. We talk about things. We talk about protection, we, pr protections, wildlife parks. The only place these animals live, they're going to be living, are wildlife parks. And the wildlife parks in Africa constantly are encroached on by poachers. And those poachers either are looking just to make money to feed their families. It's human. It, they want to eat, right? And now all sea turtles are threatened with extinction. But this guy's closest, the Hawksbill sea turtle. 15, oh. oh. They grow slowly and breed rarely. Okay. Red crowned roof turtle. Wow, that's a pretty turtle. My gosh, what a beautiful turtle. <laughs> In India. But the, the turtle's been driven from the areas like Nepal and Bangladesh. Heavy water contamination, water extraction projects. They've also drowned in illegal fishing nets and irregular water flow from dams have killed them. So they are limited to a single river in India. And it's probably polluted. Maybe there's 500 left. I mean, this is it. 
So the children that the author is talking about, her two children, all of these will just be a glimpse in somebody's memory bank. The Sumatran elephant hurts because there were 350 elephants found this week dead. And I did this. Now, this see, it says here, and this is a year ago, my updated piece on elephants showed that there were a hell of a lot less more than 700,000. They were talking, to, I, it, you'll have to go watch it, way less, more than half less than the Sumatran tiger. Look how beautiful that Sumatran tiger is. We have tattoos of tigers. People have this and that. But we fucking killed them all. We fucking killed them all. This guy was from Vietnam, the Sola, a little cattle relative. And they said not much was known. It was a very, uh, very solitary animal. <laughs> And we did here. They said we're 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 watching the species disappear before we even had a chance to understand it. And we've all heard about the vaquita, the Gulf of California, the vaquita, little vaquita, twelve left. If now that's a year ago. Yangtze finless porpoise. Ugh, I don't know. This is really getting me upset, and I should maybe I shouldn't have done this. But you know what? I guess if. If people share this and others see activism, or not just share me, but talk about it much more in the mainstream talking of conversations. It's very hard, though. It's very hard. Precious steam toad in Malaysia. The little browns hutia in Jamaica. Vancouver Island marmot. Look at that. Oh man, Canada. Let's see how many of there. How many are left? Ninety. Okay, so a year ago, ninety were left. Well, guess what? <laughs> if ninety were left last year, how many do you think are left now in in a year? So let's look at some of your comments and see what you guys have been talking about out there because I, I, you know, I managed to probably depress you again, but I just think people need to understand this is happening. It, it's, it's, everybody can go through their life, but the author, she captured it for me as a mother. And I hope that, um, I, I, well, hi, Stephen. Stephen's. Oh, you know what? I have to change the color. Well, Stephen, thank you for coming. I need to change the color, and I'm going to do it somehow. I have to remember how to do this uh, because I changed it, and there we go. Can I do this? Oh, look. Right on. Sandy, I wasn't going to come up here tonight, so I will go for now. We all know what's going on. It's truly heartbreaking. We need to help the animals as much as we can, yeah? Well, okay, so this is awareness. Maybe that's where I'm trying to say awareness. There's a lot of people online and, and you know, you can only talk so much about politics and you can only talk so much about fucking Donald Trump. But you got to understand, well, you guys do because you're here. But to understand life, death, extinction, that's why I brought you that beautiful author. She is... I loved what she wrote, Jennifer Case, and she has a whole lot more. She has, uh, I'll just go over this really quickly one more time. She has a bunch of stuff she's written, and you know she's from Arkansas. So I guess just being from the South, because you see a lot of memes, and everybody's blanketing the South, like all of the South is clueless morons. But the media is just showing the people that are, you know, doing the anti-mask protesting and all. They're not showing all the people that are doing it right. Animals on the eve of extinction, which is what I read. So she's got, she even wrote about on contemplating a second child. I, I like her. I'm going to read all of her pieces. And she writes, I, I guess she's a teacher. So what an interesting, interesting person. And I got her through that beautiful Dark Mountain project. And that was like, so that's been wonderful. So let's see. Poetry. Uh, hi. I heard Arkansas is beautiful. Oh, thank you for enjoying the, the 
the death of community. Hi, Torstein. Wow, it's nice to see your name on here. How are you? <sighs> excellent job, and yes, more depressed, but excellent job. Well, you know, I bring those things up sometimes. Uh, it depends on my mood. Again, I get inspired, and what I had wasn't prepared, and what I had is more scientific, and actually I'm trying to get a guest on with me to uh, to do this with me on Tuesday night on that Michael Schellenberger dude. The, you know, you could call him a nuclear shill, but I'm not going to give any way, anything away. You can imagine if you read it. Um, yeah, yeah. Just a shame we're going to take so much with us. It is. That's the problem, you know, and that's what we're doing. <sighs> yeah, and again, you say another good comment, natural evolution of an overly successful species. Copy. Yeah, absolutely. And Jilly, she said, everything we devise contributes to our own demise. That's the thing. Um, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Stephen, the Western culture has spread its disease everywhere except Bhutan and maybe the Himalayas. Oh, yes. We got to feel humility and love. I try. Somebody got angry at me. I mod Nicole Sandler show and I didn't agree with somebody that said something political and I didn't agree, but in, in different, different shows. And we all know that watch you follow people on YouTube, different shows and different moderators have different styles here. We've got a really cool chat and there's very rarely too much bullshit going on in there, but in others there could be, especially in more politically motivated um, channels. And the guy thought I was attacking him, but I was trying to have a conversation with him, but I can't, ha I couldn't have it. So he came on, on my channel and he made a comment about how I was mean and he thought I was a nice person. I'm like, well, I'm not always a nice person, <laughs> but the point was you cannot see inflection in a chat room. And you certainly, I mean, he was very sensitive, but we got over it and we, chatted it out on the comment section of my last, last video and it all worked out great because nobody's a troll. I mean, I guess I've had a few trolls, but I don't like using the troll. I like to talk about what people are saying and why are they saying it? Where's their attitude coming from? Because maybe I'll learn something from them. He was a little bit of a fish out of the water in his, in his, th that day in that show. But you know what? He's there. And People are all testy and, 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 and getting all upset so easy. I don't know what you're talking about, Torstein, and I'm not going to do that. I'm not arguing. I'm not having a fight with anybody in the chat room. Hey, Val, anybody have a run-in with a corona? Well, you know, sometimes I feel lousy. I always think either I had it or I'm going to get it, but I'm not. I'm trying not to... Um, you know, if anybody else has a comment about it, I'm studying stoicism to prepare for what's ahead. Well, you know, we do have to be a bit stoic, don't we? I think we do. I do. Um, give my moderator spot to Steven if he wants it. Okay. No, Kim's right. We haven't had a troll and nobody's going to bring any kind of negativity. You know what? I made a decision and, and then I'm going to let y'all go. I made a decision in my life. Maybe a lot of other people ought to try this. I made the decision that I'm going to be happy every day and I am not going to let anything anymore undermine my attempt to just be happy and satisfied with what I have or even happy just to see something grew overnight a quarter of an inch. Be happy and grateful because what I have is a lot more than a lot of people. And I am and I'm really don't want to see the negativity and fighting and arguing. And again, I've talked about it. I've fallen into it on Twitter, but I've, I've, I've tried to, 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 to kind of put a break on it. I don't want the ugliness. Because we already see the ugliness. We see extincting animals. We see what is around us. So why should we be ugly? And why should we fight? 
Why should we fight and be ugly? It's, it's human nature, but it doesn't have to happen with me or for me. Man, and so if my tiny little weenie channel never gets any freaking bigger, who cares? The whole point is let's not fight. And I said that to people in my flesh and blood personal life. No more of it. That's all you can do, right? Absolutely. Nobody wants a negative Nancy. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to be a negative Nancy sometimes, but you have to be cognizant and you wake up and you just say, hey, fuck it. I'm going to have a good day. And you know, I have a good day every day, every single day. I'm really surprised that I'm this happy, even though there's a lot to be miserable about, right? Tons to be miserable about. It's just, I can't not. And so many people around me just choose to be miserable all day. And I can't do that. Nope. And yeah, it is a wonderful attitude. And I probably didn't always have it. And sometimes I get really angry, like we all do. You know, we just want to punch a bag. Especially when we get online and we see something that's, you know, we have our little things that get us, that get us, you know. Oh, good. Hi, Boomer, you. Yes, drop me an email. Drop me an email. Okay, guys. Let's see. What else? Ex uh, yes, exactly. There's a a choice to that. Good to see all of you. Great show. Our needed attention to other life suffers by our practices. And even if you can look for your own little thing to do, if it's with animals, we're not going to stop these extinctions. But 20 bucks, if you ever have it, to a an organization that works with animals, not one of the big greens. I'm talking about maybe a smaller local organization like all those organizations. When we had um, Dr. Gabuji on here and he was talking about the things that are happening in Africa with the the uh, gardening and the tree building, I mean tree, tree growing, things like that. What else can we do? And then our local community, work in the local community. You know, I wanted to foster during this uh, pandemic. I wanted to foster, but I have five cats and it was the, it was going to be a big pain in the ass for the SPCA. And I don't know if I could handle a big dog. So, <sighs> all right, guys, Orla. Yeah. Hi, Orla. Yeah. But it was, it was okay. You can watch it. Or when I put the links into the article, you can read the article, do positive things and create higher vibrations. Hey, Steven, I made you a mod. If you don't want to be, you don't have to be. Hey, Jean, how are you? I only block people by accident, but thanks to Jilly Love, I know how to correct it. Yay! Hey, it's all a learning thing. Tonight I put music on. I, I learned how to add into the into the software sound effects music. And I didn't know if you could hear it. It's really hard to tell. You know, I, I just put it on. So um, that was it. So let's not fight. Maybe nobody blocked anybody. Can you hear the music? I'm going to make a new uh, intro, I think, to the show. Should be fun. I'm going to let y'all go because we're going on 49 minutes. But thank you. I hope you enjoy the article and uh, we'll share it. Even if it's not the video, share the article. Especially to younger parents that might be wrestling with this, that have had kids. Even if they knew having kids was really not, she knew. There's a lot of us that have children. Okay. I like that. Ended a very nice day. I know. I look at your stuff. Like icing on a banana cake. Family. I don't have a lot of family. What? <laughs> oh, Hoople's cat. Okay. Good night, everybody. I, I see that, that there's a little arguing, and thank you, Stephen. Everybody have a great night. Don't forget, uh, don't forget, Sunday night, Kevin will be with Jennifer and myself. And that should be interesting. We don't even know what our topic is. We don't even know exactly. I think we're just going to free associate the three of us. Maybe we'll have something Kevin brings up. So we'll see. All right, guys. Good night.
Have a absolutely fantastic rest of your day and see you Sunday. And have a nice, if you're in the United States, I'm not going to see fireworks, I hope. I hate them. <laughs> I like to see them far, far away, but enjoy.